Hi everyone, I'm Carla. Welcome back to Lesson 5 of Kids Art Week. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle paintings from yesterday with Erica. And today we have um, an artist and a teacher from Texas named Jen Fauché, and she's going to tell us about her project right now. So hi, Jen. How are you? Hi, Carla. I'm glad to be here today. Thank you. I'm so glad Doing you're great. here. <laughs> so tell us about yourself and what, what we're going to be doing today. Okay, well, uh, I'm an uh, elementary art teacher. I teach uh, through, uh, K through five right now and uh, used to teach uh, high school back in my early years of uh, art teaching. I've been an art teacher for 16 years and I love teaching and inspiring kids through art. So I'm glad I can be here today to teach you my uh, Basquiat art lesson. I love him. I have a book here. I'm just going to put, um, put them both here while you're talking so that in case... Um, but he, he has kind of like unusual, messy, and scary work. So tell us what, what, what our project's going to be and, and why you like it. Okay, well, um, we're going to be doing something called a uh, abstract self-portrait inspired by Basquiat. Now, when we say we're inspired, it means we're not copying his art, but we're going to be looking at his art as a source of inspiration. And um, Basquiat is one of my favorite artists, and I'll we'll talk to you more about that. But we're going to be doing an, an abstract self-portrait, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, too, where we're going to be um, looking at symbolism and how we can use symbolism and color uh, to be expressive. Well, I have some books. I'm just going to flip through them. Um, the first one is... Um a children's book that was published after he died the, and was written by Maya Angelou and it's called Life Doesn't Frighten Me and this is a beautiful book. They've um, collected paintings that he did on his own and paired them with the writing after after he already had died. So it's really a poetic and lovely um, children's book and art book. And I have another book here. Let's see if we can find, I mean, he has just the greatest uh, way of making animals and people and marks and, um, and fun kind of, I don't know, kind of scary, but kind of fun. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing your examples that you have too, Jen. Oh, yes. Um, well, this is a, uh, an actual picture of Basquiat. This is a photograph of him seeing so see um, who he is. He was an artist. Um, he was born in 1960 in Brooklyn, New York. So um, his work is um, almost very, what I like to call almost childlike. He, he doesn't worry about the natural conventions of art, if everything is perfect or if it's straight or if it's neat. He just um, uses his art to express. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing today. Great. So what supplies do we need for today? All right. So um, we're going to be using basic supplies. And the cool thing about this um, uh, project is that the supplies are things that we probably already have around our house if um, we like to create art. Um, some of the things will be some basic plain papers, or you can use a sketchbook. I have an old sketchbook here um, that I made. We're just going to be using a page in it. Or you can be use, you can use just plain white paper, or um, if you have another sketchbook. So that's what we're going to be starting off with. Um, then we're going to be using marking tools. And this is pretty general. Um, that could be anything. I have this box here full. This is my marking tool box. So awesome. <laughs> so I have everything in here from markers to pens to uh, pencils, um, maybe oil pastels. Um, I have these interesting things here. They make actually they make dots. <laughs> so um, then we're going to be using. Um, some opaque paint. When I say opaque paint, it's paint that you can't see through. So for example, watercolor, you can probably still use it, but the opaque paint's gonna be better. Um, also, if 
you don't want to uh, worry about getting messy and cleaning up, you, there's washable paints you could use as well. Um, then we're going to be using some old papers. So if you have any kind of papers like um, old newspapers, maybe some papers that have already been painted on. And here's some ones I did with jelly prints. So any kind of old papers that you have laying around, maybe ones that you've already even mess up art. Um, in my classroom, we save paintings so that we don't like so we can paint over them. Um, and then some paint brushes of varying sizes, maybe some little and big. Okay. Uh, and then a water cup. All right. Okay. Well, let's get started. Tell us what to do. Okay. So, and, and if I, if you see me looking over here, I ha just have some notes to kind of help guide me along. Um, so, uh, the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be choosing a color for the head. So if you see on this one here, we're going to be choosing a background color. So for example, the blue I chose for mine. Now, when you choose this color, you want to think about, um, if you look at Basquiat's art, he has, um, he doesn't use what we would call conventional uh, skin tone. So um, we want to look at our skin tone and match it, but not for this. This is abstract portrait. So you can see here you use yellow and blue and blue. Even in this one, he has a two-tone color. So you're going to just be choosing a color and you want to choose a color that maybe you respond to. So um, even if you're trying to convey an emotion, some people think of red. Um, I've been choosing, for some reason, I've been responding to the color blue. So I put, you're going to choose that color and you're going to pick one of your old papers. I, I was saying you needed um, two old papers. So here I have an old calendar <laughs> page, an uh, old calendar that's from a couple of years ago, and I put some blue on here. So choose one color for, for your head, and I've already got some blue on here. And if you want to mix another color in, you can. I mixed a little bit of white. So... Now we're going to be using this old page as a paint palette, but it's going to be become something else later. So okay. um, this is our paint palette. You don't even need to wash anything today except your brushes. Okay, so um, I have, instead of an old piece of paper, I had um, one that I'd marked on, so I'm going to use that. So this is on my paint palette. It's not my real piece. No, this okay. is not going to be your, your actual painting. This is just going to be your paint palette. Okay, gotcha. So, um, so go ahead and decide a color and I, I put blue and white. You can choose two colors and mix them and see what happens. You don't always have to do, um, straight out of the tube. Okay. Um, it's always exciting if you can make your own color. Once you've done that, you're going to choose a second paper. Okay. This is going to be our background where we're going to make the head. So I have this old piece of paper here. This was actually a messy mat um, that I've just used to paint other things so I don't get paint on the table. Um, so I'm going to choose this as one of my second old paper. Um, and this is where you're going to be putting painting on the head. Now here you want to make a decision. Do I want it to be landscape? Do you want it to be vertical? So you're going to be painting a head on here, kind of like um, this here. So you want to choose maybe this way looks better, kind of like on mine, I did vertical. So you want to make a decision of which way you want your paper. I just wanted to interject. Um, I used up my one used paper that I had, so I I had a piece of white paper that I just kind of messed up with some scribbles. So if you guys don't have any um, old paper, um, don't let that stop you. You can take your piece of white paper and scribble it up and then use that as your old, as your old paper. That's fine, right? <laughs> Definitely, Carla. Okay. And, um, even something that has old prints on it like this would even work. You know, just this is an old music sheet. So anything like that would be great and even something that you cleaned your brush off on or spilt coffee on. Okay. <laughs> Good. 
So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a head-like shape. So the reason why I say that, because this is abstract art. So we're not worried about if it looks realistic. So you want to think about, do you want it on a front view? Do you want it on a side view? Do you want, um, and maybe it's not human-like. I mean, it's a self-portrait. They say every artist makes a self-portrait, meaning no matter what you paint, it's going to be about you. So whatever you decide, you want to start creating that face shape. Now, I decided last minute that I wanted to do mine vertical. And do you want it in the middle? Do you want it on the side? Lots of choices to think about. But I'm going to go ahead and start with my head-like shape. Now, it's always good to start a little bit smaller, and then you can go bigger. And if you got too big, you're going to have an opportunity to kind of fix that later. So, um, so just kind of, now think about if it's a straight on face, you would want to do some, maybe some ears. So, and even perhaps a neck. If you have room for a neck, you can do a floating head if you want to. And if you have a big paper, you might even make a full body. And so uh, Basquiat even created, um, you know, works with the full body showing. So you want to think about shoulders, neck, um, ears maybe. So you're not worried about details. It's just the background. One of the thing while you're making that I wanted to tell you about Basquiat is we're going to be doing a lot of layering, as you can already tell. Uh, Basquiat was a, a street artist. Um, he did art in the city. So a lot of the walls that he would spray paint on and paint on had a lot of texture. So he kind of mimics that in his art. So he does, if you've ever been in a city and seen graffiti, there's layers and layers. And Basquiat started working on a canvas and wanted to create that same effect. So we're going to be building up layers. Okay. So I've got my shape. You want me to show it to you? I'll show it to you. Definitely. <laughs> I put a hand on there. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great, Carla. That's very Basquiat. Um, so we're going to lay that aside to dry. Okay. Why that's drying, you're going to get your, um, your plain papers. Now, whether that was in a sketchbook or whether that was in or just a plain white paper. I just have a plain white paper here. So we're going to be creating a grid. Now, I know that there's some of us who, um, like my husband, I told, he did this assignment with me. He mm -hmm. does the art assignments with me. Um, he wanted the ruler and wanted to know what <laughs> If you like to measure, you can measure and do exact, but we're going to be dividing our paper up into threes. So if you, and you can use anything to draw your grid. We're going to be making nine boxes and you can either draw lines across or you can make another little box on the inside. And all you're going to need is two lines vertical and two lines horizontal. And like I said, if you're one of those people who like to measure, by all means, you can measure. <laughs> okay. Um, but with Basquiat's art, it, he teaches, his work kind of teaches us to be loose. So this can be an opportunity to do something opposite than what you're used to. Okay, great. <laughs> so you're going to be creating a grid. Now, the thing about the grid is we're going to be working on something called personal symbols. And in Basquiat's art, he used symbolism as um, part of the main, one of the main focuses of his art. One of his most famous symbols that he uses is the crown. Hmm. Um, you'll see this on a lot of his art. Um, the crown uh, represents maybe, it's, it's kind of like, his own personal symbol so we can only interpret what we think something about um him wanting maybe to have greatness or maybe um in the past um there's um some leadership that's been passed down 
Um, in this example here, um, let's see. There's the crown, you can see. And also Basquiat uses a lot of um, bones in his art too. Uh, when he was about seven years old, he was in a, a accident where he had to go into the hospital and he was fascinated by the x-rays. Cool. And his mom also gave him a Grey's Anatomy book when he was a kid. So he was fascinated by that. So the bone became a symbol for him. Um, cool. And you'll see it repeated in his art. Cool. Um, so here's some symbol making that I started. Um, now, sometimes it's hard to think of symbols right off the top of our head. Um, so I've outlined some in the... Um, that you could use, you could think of maybe some of your favorite foods. Um, you could think of maybe an animal that you identify with. Okay, so so, so our job is to fill the box, fill the boxes with nine different symbols. Yes, and if you can't think of nine, you can maybe do a few of them, and then as you're working on other parts of your painting, you can come back to those. Okay, so you're not forced to think of nine right away. Um, and maybe you think of more than nine. Right. So I'm going to do three more here. And but then what's the next step? Okay, so the next step, we're going to be adding facial features on our um, head that we created. So um, here's one that I had that's already dry and you want to make sure it's dry. Um, and we're going to be adding facial features. Um, now, the thing is about Basquiat's um, art is that when he does facial features, they're, they're abstract, meaning we're not worried about the proportions of art, right, of facial features right now. For example, if you look at this one, you can see um, the eye it does not look like a realistic eye. He has these bulging eyes. The nose is a shape. Um, so, uh, and another person who does that is Picasso. He's famous for making these abstract faces. So this is a Picasso painting I uh, just sharing with you. And also, um, you can also look at African mask as a source of inspiration as well. Those are beautiful. Um, yeah, cool. They use the eyes and the shapes. So. Now you can use it. here. You want to think about what would draw over your paint. So um, oil pastels, crayons, markers might even work uh, depending on your marker. So you want to just start adding some maybe eyes. And actually, I'm going to go in with an oil pastel. I'm going to use oil pastel too. Um, so you're thinking of what your face might look like. Yeah, um, gotcha. And I notice, uh, and we're inspired by Basquiat. Right. So, um, and maybe Picasso. So I think of those bulging eyes that I always see in his um, because I like how he uses the teeth. I'm going to add the, the teeth, even some cheeks. <laughs> the teeth always seem a little scary to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's why his work might seem scary because he does that with the teeth. Because anytime we make teeth like that, and, and eyebrows are going to show expression too. So think about what kind of expression you want to convey. And, you know, art is a good chance for us to, if we have any emotions or feelings that we're dealing with, you know, we can, we can use that here. So, yeah. Um, and what's even funny is maybe showing the teeth with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've decided that I'm mad because of the mosquito that's been buzzing in my ear at night. So I'm, <laughs> I don't remember what a mosquito looks like, but I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going like to draw that. a little bit of a bug kind of thing here that's flying okay so facial features hair and then and then what 
what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be doing what's called uh, toning up or toning down the background. So that means um, if you have any, conf and you might not even need to do this step, but whatever you're using, it might be conflicting, meaning yeah. maybe this is not working with the face. So I feel like I got a lot of stuff going on over here, which I'm going to be putting the symbols on here. So I want to tone this down. So you could easily tone it down with, we get our uh, paint palette paper that we had earlier. And um, I like using a little bit of white. You can use a light color, but you want to do something called maybe a dry brush on it. So you don't want to get your brush too wet. <laughs> And so I got some white here that I'm going to be, and I'm using my paint palette paper. And you can even add maybe a little tone to it. So I might add a little bit of a dot of red into mine. So this is going to tone down my background. So you want some of your background still showing through. Um, you don't want it to necessarily cover your background. You want a little bit of it still showing through. So. One thing that's interesting about uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat is that he was uh, trilingual. Um, really? He spoke French. Uh, English and Spanish. Wow. His mom was Puerto Rican and his father was Haitian. So he grew up in a trilingual household. That's cool. <laughs> okay, that that's that's great, the way that toning down the background, but leaving part of it. But like I can see where that really brings out the face. Um, I have one here that's dry, that's already toned down. Um, my, my face isn't quite in this one, but you want to let this one dry before we go on to the next step. So the toned down background, you want it to dry. Okay. Um, then we're going to be adding our, um, our symbols. So you want to go reference your symbol chart. And now you can add all your symbols. You can add some of your symbols. Um, maybe you can add a symbol that you... Uh, didn't think of. So at this point, we want to use um, our various, you can use markers, you can use pencils here. Think about every time you draw a symbol, you want to change your mark making tool. So for ex so you want to create symbols randomly and haphazardly in the background. Um, think about if a symbol is uh, means something more to you, maybe that's a bigger symbol. Okay. Okay, so. so just we're just putting three to four or five. We're just picking three or four or five symbols. Yes. And if you ha have room and time to do all of them, by all means, you can do them all. Um, but just for demonstration purposes, we're going to put a few. You can use oil pastels. Um, you can use markers. Um, let's see. So these are your symbols. This is like your code. Think of it like your hieroglyphics, <laughs> like the Egyptians had. It's a way to communicate. So this is kind of like your secret code. If people can decode you by this. Let's see. And it's interesting how we choose what we might use. My so every time choose a different my symbols are, one of them is a cloud and a rainbow. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. And I think a great thing would be uh, if you're doing this with your family or anyone else is to discuss the symbols with your family and see why, why they're so important to you. And you might be able to find some things out about, about your family you didn't know. So here's what mine looks like, Jen. <laughs> oh, that's great, yes. I love your symbols, Carla. Okay, and so because we want you to go ahead and get started with yours, I'm gonna go ahead and show you um,
the next step um, on my finished piece. So once you have all your symbols in, um, you, you want to have it kind of cohesive. So you want to bring it all together with other colors. So you, this is a good chance to use maybe some of those smaller brushes to get into the tight areas and big brushes to kind of, you get to play a little bit here. And Basquiat was inspired by uh, hip hop and jazz. So if you want to put on a little music and uh, finish painting the rest of it, um, and I would love to see what you created. And um, if you, anything you create, please uh, tag me. I would love to see what you've done. And um, Carla, thank you for having me here today. And um, I enjoyed the giving my Basquiat lesson. Thank you so much, Jen. It was so fun. And I just wanted to say that, like, I kind of like mine how it is. And so I might skip that last step. So it's okay to do that, right? It's okay to, to stop when you like it. Is that okay? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> and if you wanted to do another one too, I wanted to add that, um, you know, your, your paint palette paper will, can become another background yeah. or something in the future. So, that's, that's perfect. Uh, <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Mrs. Miss Fauché, <laughs> um, and thank you so much for being here. Um, I can't wait to see your Jean Michael Biscott self portraits um, inspired by um, Mrs. Fauché. Um, please post if you can. Thank you so much for being here at Kids Art Week 2020. Um, I hope you'll join us again next year, and um, have a great summer, everybody.